first order of business is due to the oversight of myself. Uh, there was a motion tabled last week because of lack of, uh, the motion failed because of lack of a second. And I, I should have done that instead of tabling it. So, can you put the mic for You want me to repeat? Yes. So that motion failed. So that's, I think that's what I'm supposed to do. Okay. I move that we approve the minutes as corrected. Second that. Okay. Motion's been made. We approve the minutes of last week. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. All right. So. Increase from Mark Green from range six, step three to range six, step four. Effective first, first of August. First of August. Thank you. 
Jane's word. Yeah. had several instances in the meetings in open session where I've asked not just Steve but I've asked other department heads for accounts receivables and an update on this you know financial situation of, of their departments Steve took a while to get us those accounts receivables and he did he got he brought those to us uh, he brought us one in May <coughs> excuse me he brought us one in the month of May, and he brought us another one. I don't have them with me, but uh, it was in June or Ju the beginning of July. Uh, the format was different. Uh, the line item for May, however, did not match the current May report that he brought us. And any time I've asked Steve about accounts receivables or billing, it's like a switch goes off and he starts yelling and screaming and, and getting irate with me in open session. He's done that twice, okay, with no consequences. We as a board instructed him and we discussed the matter with Mr. Wilson. We instructed Steve to send, send the letter of to rescind that charge to him. Oh, so you instructed Steve to do that? As was, a board, yes. And what his decision is, as a fair trial, last week at the we, we mutually agreed upon it. Yeah. And Steve accomplished. failed to see that that got accomplished. So, but it was given. So, okay, it's, so this that's is so kind of that basically a, is it then? Because, I mean, the billing problems that you're that, that, that's, that That was the third, kind of the third pile <laughs> Because the third the thing in the pile that caused the issues you. that you're discussing are being addressed. I mean, they're being moved over to the hospital for billing and stuff like that. So those that issue is being addressed by the director. So I don't really see how you can dismiss somebody or terminate somebody for an issue that's in process, being directed, being fixed. The the, the billing is not an issue of why he I've asked to terminate him. So 
It's over the it's over fact, the, the lack of respect. The, he won't resend the bill to the <coughs> and farmer. and what he was instructed by us as a board to do that he uh -huh. felt that he did not do. How how long did it take to do it between the time you instructed him to do it and the time it was actually done? Third I asked place. him for an accounts receivables probably the no, third, I'm, I'm, third I'm, meeting I'm, after I was sworn into no, office. No, I think we're still talking about the fire the fire bill here. He dated, he dated the, the, the letter was dated, Terry, uh, June 25th. Doyle's statement that he brought to me in my office was dated July 17th. So that's 30 days, less than 30. Can you explain to me how getting rid of Moody will benefit this county anyway? Because, I mean, that's what you guys are up here for. You weren't elected to do your bidding. You were elected to do our bidding and take care of our county. How, how that'll do it. Because I'll be honest with you right now, this looks like a personal vendetta, which I think It's not I've a personal had, vendetta. It's nothing more than I ask of any employee that I have. I've had people come in and tell me that you're out at the bar taking bets on whether Moody's going to lose his That's job. That's not right. It's been two different people. So I've had allegations that you've taken people to lunch and brag about how you got rid of Moody, blah, blah, blah. No, and that's, that's me not, right. not, not county commissioner behavior at all. If that was a county employee, you'd probably have them up your car and, and you can deny it if you want. I've had two separate people tell me that that was going on out of squeaks or taking bets on Moody's termination. It's not accurate. Cool. All right. So, I guess basically I'll turn it over to the rest of the people and let them say the piece. Okay. Uh, what do you think of this? is just me. to do what we can before we get them transferred. 
to Wichita. He works with us, the EMS people work with us. Steve is willing to come in in the middle of the night if I call him and say, Steve, we have a big problem down here. He'll, he'll get up in the middle of the night and come. He'll come any time of the day or night to help us with intubating or just different things like that. And he, he is so knowledgeable. He's always professional in the ER. He's always treated us really nice. He um, is well respected by all of us at the hospital. And I think if you get rid of him, you'll be making a huge mistake because our EMS is the best that it's ever been. And when they bring people in from an accident, like the one a couple weeks ago, that person has the best chance for survival that they've ever had in years because of his expertise and how, he, how they work at the scene now and how they have that patient when they're brought to the hospital they have their IVs they're just at the best shape and then we can get them to Wichita quickly in the past we have had a problem with not even having enough people to cover the ambulances so if you get rid of Steve and you upset all the EMS people and they some quit you're gonna not even have enough people to cover the ambulances so they won't even be able to go out on a call to an accident or to go get somebody that had a heart attack because you will have possibly destroyed the whole EMS system by doing this. And I truly support Steve. He is excellent. I would just like to say that Steve Moody is probably, along with the hospital, Stafford Hospital and the personnel, they are truly responsible for saving my husband's life and getting him stabilized because we would have never made it to Wichita without the hospital, the crew, and especially Steve Moody. He's saving my husband's life. If you get rid of him, we're in big trouble. Yeah. I've been on Stafford County Fire for almost 20 years. EMS in 14 years, and I'm also the Chief of Police at Stafford. Um, all I know is when I first became certified in EMS, it was one of the years that the state of Kansas was not actually offering the EMT class. It was called a first responder or another state's EMTB course. Since I've been on, I've been through five EMS directors, and I can honestly say I've learned more from Steve than I have the previous four. And I just think it'd be a shame because I'm not finished learning, guys. Thank you. Yeah, I've been on EMS uh, emergency medical service since 97. Back then, we had 40 techs in the county. We're down to a handful. And if you get rid of Steve, he's trying to work to get more people to come in. And I have a feeling that if, uh, like uh, Brenda said, if you disrupted, we're going to find it. We're not going to have an EMS crew in this county. And it would be a big mistake if you do get rid of it. And like Doug said, I will back him. You know, he is one of the best directors that uh, we have had since he's taken, you know, the responsibility. Back in the back, George. Uh, yeah, George Sanders. Uh, Steve Moody uh, basically uh, has saved uh, my wife's life twice. Uh, every uh, she had a heart attack Memorial Day, uh, approximately three years ago. Uh, it was windy. It was unable to be transported by helicopter. And uh, Steve basically was able to, with his knowledge, uh, get her in the Wichita. Uh, and they were at Wesley uh, ready for her. Basically, took her out of the uh, ambulance directly into. Uh, 
The second time is she uh, had a, uh, uh, they went through her artery in the uh, uh, eye, uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the wound opened up again, and her blood pressure was so low that it was um, uh, basically asked her whether or not she wanted or they were in uh, route to Wichita and he asked her whether or not that she wanted to go to Hutchinson or Wichita because of her blood pressure and she said, Steve, I believe in you, let's go to Wichita. So that is the type of individual Steve that he is. And also, uh, the second time, Steve got out of the ambulance uh, that would have taken someone to Pratt, got in the one that was taking my wife to Wichita, and went into Wichita with him. And that's the type of individual we have here. Thank you. I was the administrator of the hospital here for about nine years, uh, even in the end of 2008. Altogether, I was in hospital administration for 23 years, and I can tell you that the ambulance, even though we may not have run it, was always one of the biggest problems we had because of trying to staff it, trying to make sure that we had people there that knew what they were doing and bringing people in. I have been gone most of the time that Steve was here, but I guess I felt that there has been some stabilization in the EMS finally after all these years. He also was present when my grandson was taken into the hospital after falling and injuring his neck and I can tell you he was very, very professional. I don't know what the problems are on accounts receivables, but just my experience alone in hospitals and in hospitals and I'm sure EMS are probably one of the last ones to ever get paid by anybody because they know you have to pick them up and you have to take care of them no matter what, whether they pay the bill or not. So they'll pay everything else, and then if there's any money left over, they'll find the ticket. Thank you. Uh, Scott Ford Miller, I'm a taxpayer resident staffer, and uh, I am also on the EMS. But first, I'd like to commend and I admire and respect the fact that you guys want to serve as county commissioners and respect that you can make tough decisions. On this one, uh, in my opinion, it was probably the wrong decision. Uh, I admire and respect Steve, but just the fact that since I've been on there for five or six years, we had a lot of instability and I feel that things kind of settled down and we kind of had some, some leadership within the position. And some of you didn't serve during the last directors. You may not know fully what all has occurred, but the train wrecked, you might say. But I also have a greater fear that what this might do on the broader specter on our county, because if maybe we don't like how the roads are mowed, is this where we're going to go? That we're just going to take it to this far? I see maybe some fear in that, but I trust you guys will make the right decision. Thank you. I'd like to take it to a lighter side. Um, I'm in the community a lot in Stafford. I work on several volunteer organizations. Steve is almost always at any function supporting the community. Um, he has his radio on 24-7. I've heard him get calls in the middle of a meeting. But I think you need to know that he's not only works for the county, he also serves his community. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry folks, I'm going to use a microphone. I don't hear very well and I didn't hear what a lot of you had to say. <clears throat> I think it's very obvious that Steve is interested in life and property. I think we as Stafford County probably know that. I think the real issue on the table to the commissioners and those that are in positions of leadership should be what is our long-term view of the life of Stafford County. Not our own personal things, but what can we do to make this county better, to attract people, 
to make it so that people are comfortable here and want to come here. I don't think there's any question that Steve has the ability to save life. I think the question is, do we as leaders want to and have the ability to save the life of the captain? I happen to have been on the State Animal Health Board when they had a foot and mouth outbreak in the UK and saw some very interesting things that most of you do not understand foreign animal disease, let alone foot and mouth. Stafford County is a highly livestock oriented county. We have two major highways going through here and if foot and mouth disease or foreign animal disease should happen to strike, it needs to be handled quickly. It needs to have an incident commander that's in charge and is in charge right now and those people need to be frank like Steve Moody is, need to know what to do. I got into one of those schools and so you can all say, Leon, what's that have to do with us? Well, the chances of us getting foot and mouth disease in Stafford County is just as great as the chance of you having a wreck on the way home. And I would like to know that we do have someone who can step up to the plate and say, this is what's going to happen, it's going to happen now, now you get to work. And I don't know, you can hear all kinds of rumors, and rumors are rumors, and I would like to suggest to the county commissioners, this situation can be resolved. And it can be resolved if you take your tablet and tear off that sheet of paper that all the things that's happened before is gone. Deal with the things that need to be dealt with in the last two or three months in a positive fashion. If you're going to keep a carbon copy of all the things that's happened in years past, this will never survive. And it's got to happen with you as commissioner, and it's got to happen with Mr. Moody. If that will happen to restore the respect, the trust, and the integrity of the people involved, Stafford County is a winner. If Steve Moody leaves, who wins and what do you win? And I think there's enough vibrations in this electronic world that when you think you're going to go find an EMS director to replace Steve Moody, I think the airwaves are full of why would you go to Stafford County? And if I was a young people person wanting to come here to start a business or be in business, health care is a serious problem. And so I think you need to look at the big picture, forget about the petty things. If we don't have leaders that can do that, then we got the wrong leaders. And I'm sorry about being frank, but let's move this county forward, let's not move it backwards. And whoever wins, I don't know what the prize is, but if we lose, the whole county loses. So thank you.
but um, he's learned so much from Steve, and I have a lot of respect for him. He's done a lot for us, and I just, I'm just here for Steve. Anyone else? Yes, my name is Jerry Steinman. I've been a lifelong resident of Stafford County. I was born and raised here. One of you councilmen, I've known all his life. I'm going to bring you up to date on a few things. Back when the ambulance was created here in Stafford County, I was one of the original five that started it. Back then, we didn't have administrator. Us five more or less handled it by ourselves. We would have been lucky if we would have had administrator because we could have done stuff so much faster, so much efficient than what it is. Okay? We had to go all the way to Wichita, the five of us, to take EMT training. They don't do that now. It's all right here. Okay? Now, I have heard a number of compliments given to this EMT service. I have been on it for a number of years and everything. But I've been participating, I was participating in a large number <coughs> of EMT activities when I was on it. I have never been on the fire department. So I can't testify to that or anything. I thought I had my plate full enough to win more. Uh, the county commissioners has been a position that is of people that the rest of the county elected to take and be professional to be of guidance, to be of uh, show respect to every citizen in this county. Not just one person or anything. We show respect to everybody. Everybody does the same thing. You know. Okay. I would like to ask of all the people, I don't know how many fires we've had. Maybe you all do. How many fires have we had in the last year? Two years? Anybody know? I can't answer that. Okay. All right. So we don't know. All right. Now, let me ask the question. Of these fires, when did we start the thing in the county? about control burns. Do we know anything about that? Control burns? Yeah. I'm going to guess within the last three years. Somewhere around there. Okay, I think it goes back to the Well, I mean, as far as it's enforcing control burns. Okay. okay. I think it goes back farther. Okay. I probably as far as as far as I know. Right. Okay. Now, how many? Or when did it came up? Come up that uh, out of these control burns that got out of hand? Were the people involved? How many of them were charged for the uh, hours, the man hours? The use of equipment. I don't have any idea what all is involved in the billing to these people. Maybe you can enlighten us on what what all this is concerned. Nobody has that. Jerry, I'm sorry, but I've written it. 
are up. Uh, or three minutes are up. Okay. Uh, appreciate you, Tara. Anyone else? I made a trip four years ago from Leavenworth to Stafford County. The purpose of that trip was to speak at the funeral of Stafford County Firefighter Dennis Simmons. Dennis was on his way back to the fire station after a wildland fire when he suffered a fatal heart attack. The four years since that solemn day, we have accomplished so much. We bought a new, first for the county, custom rescue truck paid for with insurance funds that we received. A local businessman provided for free a full set of hydraulic rescue tools. We have also added numerous fire trucks while reducing the overall number of the fleet. We have secured thousands upon thousands of dollars in grants for radios and other emergency equipment of all sorts, both fire and EMS. These grants, coupled with other changes, has allowed us to lower both the fire and EMS budgets to a point that it is lower than it was four years ago when I arrived, and we spend nowhere near all of our budgets. We purchased a new ambulance. We used donated dollars to build an emergency operations center, the first for the county, and we built a new fire station for the city and county in St. John allowing the two entities to share fire gear and breathing air fire. We were the first in the state of Kansas to use emergency reporting, a new fire-based electronic reporting system. Now, it's one of the most popularly used in the state. We also started using electronic reporting for EMS reports. Both of these were hard copy operations when I arrived. We straightened out some Firefighter Relief Association issues and got valuation reassessed. This action resulted in Stafford County firefighters getting thousands of dollars more for insurance every single year for the future. As a matter of fact, Station Chief Tom Fisher on a week ago brought by a copy of a $21,000 check to show me. It was a proud moment. We responded to hundreds of fires, rescues, and medical requests. 
we were always there. Property was protected, lives were safe. And we shared these incredible accomplishments about what our emergency responders did with our citizens and the whole world through our emergency service blog and the new phone app, a $4,000 value provided free by my son. Our emergency responders in Stafford County are truly amazing. And I was blessed to be a part of it. And this brings us to last week. At last week's commission meeting, things went as bad as any I have ever attended in my 35 years career. As you recall, the issue was a bill for a fire that wasn't to be spent. I wish the foul up hadn't happened, but it did. And I explained that. During the meeting, a motion was made without me present, to terminate me and to appoint one of my assistants who was present. Later, I was told that I held memorial checks for months at the station. I explained that wasn't true. The checks in question had been held at the funeral home, not at the EMS office. I explained that the funeral director could be called to verify. I was also told during the meeting that I didn't know how to manage and that I was a liar. I don't know what either of these accusations were based upon. Medical director Dr. Farmer or the county physician assistants were never consulted. Nor was the hospital director, any nurse, or any hospital employee. The fire station chiefs and the firefighters were not talked to. Nor was the EMS crew chief or any of our EMTs. The local law, the same. And none of the surrounding county fire chiefs, EMS directors, or all emergency managers was called. All who know me. I believe if any of these people would have been consulted, that they would have told you that my management skills are solid and that I'm not a liar. But folks, I can't change the dislike for me. That hostility is simply not healthy for me, my wife, or my fellow, fellow workers. I have received countless calls from friends across the country in emergency service who read the termination motion in the minutes of last week's meeting. And that hostility can also affect my ability to represent the emergency service providers who depend upon me and the lives of those who depend upon them. Whether the personal feelings could be resolved or controlled, I simply don't know. I appreciate all the support more than you'll ever know. But life safety is just too important to take any chance. So the, for the best, so for the best of all considered, I officially offer my resignation. No. Effective two weeks. Don't accept from today. Don't Hope always said at the end of the shows, thanks for the memories. If you accept his resignation, you need to step down. You people always need to shake up yourselves. You guys want to need to Or do you want to pay more to have an outsider? I move, I move we go into executive session for 15 minutes with the commissioners, Lisa, Mr. Sheepak, and uh, Steve Honey. What's the subject to be discussed? Personnel matters of Mr. Honey. Not elected. Not elected personnel. 
Motion That's your justification, but you have to also give a subject to what you're going to discuss. But Personnel we got matters. It. Yes, we got it. I got it. I second that. Okay. It's been moved and second. We go in executive session for how long? 15, 15 minutes for non elected personnel. All in favor say aye. 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 I want to thank everyone for their patience. Uh, it's not easy, you know, to make decisions and stuff, especially on this side of the table. But we did not accept Steve Moody's resignation. <laughs> I'd like to make a few comments. Um, Grab the mic, please. Yeah. Oops. That's the end of the row. Yeah. You're going to have to shift seats, perhaps. I'd like to make a few comments here about uh, this, these issues. Um, Steve does do a lot for our county. And, and I realize that, and I know that, and I trust in him to do a very professional job that he does. Um, you know, there's, there's things that I've been asked to do, or not asked to do, but, but comes with the job of county commissioner, that listening to everybody involved and, and all the sides of the stories that, uh, you know, you kind of, you kind of, uh, take some of that for granted and, and overlook more good than bad. Um, you know, he does do a tremendous amount, as he stated in his, in his, in his story, in his letter. Um, and, uh, you know, he, by not, us not accepting his resignation, hopefully we can uh, come to terms and uh, move forward and, and work strongly together. So, uh, that. It's, it's important to me that uh, that I don't let you down. But I, I told the commissioner that I, I can't promise that I can do it. There's uh, there's more to it. I'm not sure. 